And you're asking, Elliot. Why are you saving the shed? Why are you being weird? Well, one, I think it looks super cool. And then, um, but there's actually a purpose besides that, just me thinking it looks super cool. So that'd be kind of a little, whatever. So uh, there's a purpose for this and I'm actually going to. Hey everybody, it's Elliot here with Space Lizard Exotics and I'm hanging out with this gorgeous, beautiful gal. Oh my goodness. She's just having a blast today. So she just shed actually. Shed her new colors. Oh my goodness. Just like a gorgeous, absolute, just beautiful nature's artwork. So sarongs and arus look very similar, but as you could tell going down there, like back there, they have more of like a painted pattern with a little bit of white speckles and their dorsal tail is super amazing look. My favorite snake for sure. She's been doing absolutely phenomenal this morning. She was a little grumpy, not bad though. Her and my other green tree python, which is an Aru, they're very docile. I never really have them, you know, freak out on me or anything like that. She kind of makes me iffy sometimes, but she is, she's just, she just chills usually. She wants back in her terrarium, you can tell. But she's absolutely gorgeous. I just wanted to show her off because she just shed. She's actually a very long snake too. Another thing that you could tell between the sarongs and arus, sarongs actually have more of a white, yellow, and white and yellow belly, and the arus actually have a lot more blues on them. So the goal is actually to eventually breed the two, and we're gonna get some beautiful blue snakes hopefully too, because they both have beautiful blue patterns. As you can kind of tell with her dorsal tail, that literally looks like Southwest artwork almost. It's, it's gorgeous. We're gonna be setting her up a bioactive setup very soon. Let me fix my spectacles. I just set up Hella's as well. Um, I just actually have to put in some dairy cows and some springtails in there so they actually start taking care of all the pooey and the other, you know, just little things that they eat up and stuff like that. If there's ever any type of mold or anything like that, they'll eat that as well due to like high humidity, which is great. So bioactive cultures, if you haven't set one up, definitely a way to go. I'll actually be shooting a, like a, um, technically an instructional how to do it, but there's so many ways and there's so many, you know, pros out there that like know it. Just they built some amazing bioactive uh, cultures and setups. Um, I'm gonna just show you kind of how I usually do mine. So I'm always uh, loving to learn just new little tricks and just little ideas on bioactive cultures. So super fun. Hi baby, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> She's an amazing snake. Green tree pythons, definitely my favorite snake. Favorite reptile? Gotta say caimans, I love my caimans. I just love caimans in general. They look like little dragons, their faces, oh my goodness. Like the pattern is just like their war paint, I'm getting on their war paint on. This is the uh, Green Tree Python shed. Oh my goodness, how cool is that? The uh, the headpiece and kind of like a little bit of her upper kind of just it definitely uh, broke off. So I don't have, uh, can't really show off that, but look how long this piece is, oh my goodness. This is crazy, she's actually a very long snake. So one of my favorite things about the shed is like when they shed all perfect and their dorsal tail piece is still there. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. And you're asking Elliot, why are you saving the shed? Why are you being weird? Well, one, I think it looks super cool, but there's actually a purpose besides that, just me thinking it looks super cool. So that'd be kind of a little whatever. So uh, there's a purpose for this and I'm actually going to put this in the bioactive setup. Uh, what you do, you kind of break it up a little bit in pieces that way it uh, feeds, well, the bugs in there. So the cultures that are alive in there, this is what they will eat and that's what, you know, they may go bye-bye when the snake actually sheds inside the terrarium. If not, what you do, you just put it in there and then it basically just feeds them and makes it little, little happy cultures. So super fun. So uh, right now I have springtails in there as well as dairy cows, so super fun. So we're gonna be throwing this in the bioactive uh, setup and break it up a little bit for some food for them. And well, gotta put some live plants in there soon too. So super exciting. And I got a couple more bioactives to set up in the next video. Um, I will actually be doing an instructional of how to set up me personally, how I usually do it. Um, there's so many ways to do it. And I would love to, in the comments to, you know, let me know what you do in your bioactive setup, super fun. So I like always learning new things. I'm always researching how to do my bioactives better, what cooler things to put in there for the, you know, just to help the environment for the snake. Looks cool, it's aesthetic, everything like that. So, well, have a wonderful day, everyone. And if you, like I said, don't forget to hit subscribe and like on the videos and check out the uh, TikTok as well as Instagram too for all the fun, exciting videos and pictures and all the shenanigans we do. Super fun. Anyway, well, ta-da everyone, checking out as Space Those Exotics.